from the Storybook Theater at NWCT, it's the How Do You Do Show with Tal and Bigelow. Today's guests, the Ogle family, plus a holiday treat from Kids Company. I'm Perry Winkle. Now here's your host, Tal and Bigelow. Hey everyone, welcome to the How Do You Do Show. I'm your host, Tal and Bigelow, and today I hope you brought your appetite because we are going to be doing some cooking, and I'm super excited. I love to cook. I know it wouldn't look like it if you've seen the sheer number of meals that have been delivered to my door in the last eight months, but I really do love to cook. Uh, I've even learned to cook some of my like restaurant favorites at home because I didn't want to go get them, so I learned how to make a Crunchwrap Supreme all by myself, so... Anything is possible. Uh, but I, I love cooking. I love cooking spring rolls, salmon spring rolls. Pork chops are a favorite of mine. Fried rice I need to do more often. Uh... Hey, hey, Perry. Uh, hey, boss. Is that you? Yeah. Yeah, that was, that was me. You, uh... You a little hungry? Yeah, I, uh, I'm sorry. I know you told us to, you know, come in having eaten, but I just get hungry a lot, so I don't know if there's anything I could have done to prevent that, but I am hungry. No, no sweat. Um, you know, it should be probably, you ch check under the piano. I feel like there's usually always a box of graham crackers around here somewhere. Uh, okay. Well, I guess I could, um... Oh, oh, no way! Oh, you going? Wow, there was a box of graham crackers just sitting here. Yeah, I mean, they're just, they're just around. I'm starting to think this building is magic. Yeah, yeah, welcome. Well, if you are also starting to get a rumbly in your tumbly, we've got you covered. Here to share one of their favorite quick and easy comfort food recipes with us, please welcome the Ogle family. Hi, Meanie, how's it going? Good, David, how are you? I'm good, so... Uh, you've got a couple helpers in your kitchen right here. Would you mind introducing me to everyone? These are the chefs and I'm just the sous chef. I'm actually like the call me chef. Perfect. Uh, Perfect. This is uh, my mother, Amachi. Her name is Leela, but we call her Amachi, which is grandma. This is my daughter, Manali. She's almost 11. And this is our son, Mana, who's almost nine. And I'm Minnie. Uh, you're gonna oh, show okay. us how to, how to cook a quick dish here, right? Yeah, so we were we thought as a family we thought um, of sharing a dish called the kichdi, kichdi, mm -hmm. and that's just a, a very very simple basic dish that we've enjoyed as a family. Uh, I have you know fond memories of growing up with it. It's a it's a comfort food for me. I was thinking of you know what is that when you're on death row and they ask you like what's the final meal you want to eat? I would probably say kichdi. So it's one of those dishes, uh, I hope I never have to make that decision. But, see, so um, Kichri has a lot of uh, nice, fascinating history. Um, it's it's um, all over the Asian world, you know, you can, from Pakistan to Bangladesh to India, Sri Lanka. But I think most countries have some sort of concoction or some variant of a dish that basically has, is very wholesome, it's easy to make, and is a comfort food that maybe involves some starch and some protein. So the kichdi is a, is a concoction of rice, lentils, vegetables, pretty much anything you want to put in there. So with that, Manali wanted to share a story about yeah. kichdi. There's a story about an emperor and his and his minister. The emperor's name is Akbar, and the minister's name is Birbal. Okay. So Akbar asks Birbal, um, do you think that people would do anything for money? And he says, I think yes, if they're like very hungry, they need food, or they really need the money, then yes, definitely. So um, they find this old man who hasn't eaten in like two or three days. And they ask him, um, will you stand in this pool of freezing cold water all night? And if you do that, I can give you 10,000 gold pieces. And this man says yes, because he's hungry and he wants the money. Um, so he stands there all night, and he comes to the palace the next day, and Akbar asks him, um, how did you do it? How did you stay out there all night? And this man replies, well, I saw this little like light in the distance, and I just kept staring at that, focusing on that, and that helped me go through the night. 
So Akbar says to them, no, that's cheating. You can't see any light, no heat, nothing. Um, so he says, okay, you won't get the money. So the man leaves. He can't say anything. He can't argue with the emperor. So the next day, um, Birbo is, is, isn't there. He doesn't show up. And this goes on for seven days. He doesn't show up at all. Um, so eventually people start wondering, where is he? So Akbar goes to his house to look for him and he's sitting there in the kitchen cooking kitchidi. Um, and he asks, why is this taking so long? How did it take seven days? And Birbal, he's very smart and witty. So Birbal replies, um, well, if this little candle gives off so much heat and so much light, then someday it will cook the kitchidi. And then Akbar realizes, oh, that's not fair. I should have given him the money. <laughs> wow, that's awesome. Thank you so much for sharing that story. Yeah. Well done. I love food with a story behind it. I really do. It's the first solid food that um, baby from India eat. Oh, really? Okay. Okay, so we're ready to start cooking if, you, if you're ready. Yeah, you uh, I'll take notes. And uh, yeah, so tell me, do you want to start by telling me what's in it? What are the ingredients we need? If I wanted to make this at home, what do I need? All you need is some rice. So we put one cup of rice. One cup and you of can rice. use any rice. You can use basmati, you can use red rice, you can use brown rice if you want to be healthy. Um, this is lentils. It's called yellow pigeon pea. But basically you can use any lentils. And I'll show you. We have a a thing full of lentils. That's the stash of lentils. Yeah, wow. Yeah, because as vegetarians, you want to eat protein, and this is a good option. So we have black lentils, yellow, kidney beans, all kinds of things. So uh, the one we prefer to use in my family, that my mother, Helen. Green gram. Uh, it's called green gram, but it's broken, so it looks yellow. Okay. You can fry it, you can roast it if you want for a little bit of... Um, little bit of flavor, extra flavor. So you wash that, you wash the rice and keep that aside. Then what you do is you can either use a, a pressure cooker, which all Indian families have, just a pressure cooker, or you can just use a pot. And what you do is you put a little bit of ghee, and I, but you take about one teaspoon or so of ghee which is clarified butter yeah it can also just be regular butter clarified butter is a little bit healthier and you put it into the we use our hands a lot in cooking so you put it into the the cooker or the pan that you're cooking in and let it warm let it warm up a little bit and once it's warm then you throw in a little bit of cumin seeds. So okay. these are all the spices that are really popular. When we say, you know, you need food is spicy. It's not always like hot spicy, but we do put a, so this is cumin, C-U-M-I-N, cumin seeds. Just a little bit of that, like maybe a pinch. I know a lot of people are probably familiar with cumin powder. Is it spicier in seed form or? Yeah. Cumin powder is fine too. Yeah, we just like the kind of crunchiness that comes with cumin seeds, so we use, but you can use cumin powder. So my mother likes to put a little bit of bay leaf. Bay leaf. Yeah. It, it's funny when people find that in soup and stuff and they don't know what it is and they're like, there's a leaf in here. It's like, no, it's supposed to be. It's it's good. <laughs> you kind of get it a little, just, you know, let it sit there and simmer with the ghee or the butter for a few minutes so it absorbs the flavor of that. And so the cumin seed and the bay leaf goes into the ghee. Wait a few minutes and then... Here is the cool thing about kitchen is you can pretty much open your fridge or your uh, pantry and any vegetables that you have that you'd like to include, you can. So in our case, we like potatoes. Who doesn't like potatoes? Yeah. Yum. So we've got sweet peas, carrots and potatoes and some onions. So we first put in the onion and then we let it roast a bit. We let the onion roast a bit. When it turns golden, you throw in your vegetables. Right? So throw in the vegetable that needs the most cooking first. This feels like a really good, to me it sounds like a really good fall dish, a really good, something to warm you up. So the onions are turning golden brown. Yum. And 
And then you can try, we throw in some tomatoes. Right? Got it. So the tomatoes go in there. And basically keep mixing everything together. And you're just mixing everything and, and heating everything until it is, is it just kind of the yep. preference? So. Yep. That's about it. And then you add all the other vegetables and you keep cooking it. And once it's roasted and you feel like it's cooked a little nicely, you can add water if you feel like you need some water. And then you throw in the rice and the lentils in there. The only other thing you need to do after that is we add these three spices. Salt. Got it. Salt. Turmeric. Turmeric. Really good for health. You know. And finally a little bit of chili powder if you're up for some spiciness or you can add black pepper powder. So those are just the three spices that go. So some salt to taste. Small teaspoon of turmeric and as, you know, as much as uh, you can tolerate to stand red pepper, red chili powder. Are you someone who likes a lot of spice? Yes, our family does like a lot of spice. Do you guys like spicy food? Oh, yeah. Yes. Wow, yeah, good. Start early. I like spice too. So that's about it. You mix it all together and then you add some water on top and you let it all cook. You can either use a pressure cooker like we do and it takes about 20 to 25 minutes and voila khichdi is ready all right awesome what is it so what's it look like when it's totally completed then well it will look like a, a porridge that's savory so we have a little bit of moisture it's kind of watery um, and a little bit soupy not much and you can put an extra dollop of ghee or clarified butter on the top. You can put some cilantro leaves for fragrance and just presentation. It's such a colorful dish. It's such a pretty, uh, I know it smells good in there. I am going to try and make this myself because I just want to, I want to smell it and I want to taste it so bad. Uh, wow. Yeah, this sounds like a perfect dish. I feel like it sounds like something anyone can make and uh, I, I really can't wait to try and I'll let you know how it turns out because... Yes, definitely. Do you have any like other other favorite dishes you like to cook? Like how often do you cook? Are you a family that cooks? Oh, like, every day or? a lot. Yeah. Well, we cook. Yeah, we we are six of us in our family, and we cook uh, three meals a day. So it's eighteen meals during COVID days. <laughs> so she's the main cook, as you can see. She's uh, only eighty nine, but she uh, is super active, and she's our head chef here. So she cooks most of our meals, uh, but we eat uh, mostly Indian food and we always eat a lentil, different kinds of lentils. We always eat some bread or rice and then some vegetables, uh, curry and yogurt. We always have yogurt, so if something is too spicy, there's always plain yogurt. So, but yes, we cook. Manali, what's your favorite dish? Yeah, what's your favorite um, Everything. Mm -hmm. That's such a good answer. <laughs> yeah. Okay, what is your favorite dish? Alu puri. Alu puri. Okay, Amaji, what is your favorite dish to eat? It's kitchen, I like very much. Yeah, like good. Kitchen. And Italy, sambar, so many other things. Tor, what is your favorite dish? Uh, brisket. <laughs> That's a good choice too. All good answers. Awesome, thank you so much. Yes, you're welcome, Talon. Enjoy your kitchen. I will. I really will. I, um, thank you so much for letting us into your home and sharing a recipe with us. And hopefully this inspires a lot of people to give it a try. And I yes. can't wait. <laughs> yes. Stay healthy, stay safe during COVID. Eat kitchen. Yes. Stay healthy and stay safe. And uh, yeah, hopefully we'll talk to you again sometime. If you ever want to cook for us again, let me know. My thanks to the entire Ogle family. We'll be right back with more How Do You Do?
Welcome back to How Do You Do? Well, dinner is over and now it's time for dessert. If you've seen episode three of this show, then you already met Karthika Apia when we talked to her about A Midsummer Night's Dream. That interview went on a little bit longer than what you saw, and we talked about her cake business and how to make the perfect frosting. Enjoy. So you make your own frosting. I sure do. I feel like I've tried to make frosting in the past, and it's definitely been uh, a disaster. It was like too runny. Like frosting shouldn't be runny. That's weird. <laughs> how do you make good cake yeah. frosting? Yeah. So a lot of what I'm learning, and it goes for cooking and baking, is there is an interesting science behind it. If you've ever worked with things like any type of dairy product, or my favorite are, some th are things like egg whites or cream, like the magic of air, um, just incorporating air is what, you know, the professionals call it. But when you just whip something for so long, it turns from this icky like egg whites to like this foamy meringue. But the same goes for frosting. So your most... Um, basic type of frosting which i would encourage anyone to make is called um american buttercream um so the word itself says buttercream so you're basically creaming butter until it is super soft so you think it's some magic in there but really the store-bought like safeway brand like cake usually is just american buttercream like your classic birthday cake um, so it's butter and sugar. That's all it is. Um, so you have butter and you have um, uh, powdered sugar. And then, of course, you can add a little bit of vanilla uh, like for flavoring or salt to bring that vanilla flavor out. Um, and the ratios are slightly important. It's not as important as when you're baking. Uh, it's really up to your own um, taste. Some people don't like it as sweet. So some of the tips that I have is making sure your butter is at room temperature. And I'm super impatient, like I hate that. So there are some ways you can like um, bring your room temperature, uh, butter to room temperature from the fr fridge. So putting it in the microwave for just a few seconds usually does the trick. And if you're still not able to and you accidentally melt it, um, if you happen to have a stand mixer, and not everyone has a stand mixer at home, it's like a little KitchenAid. Um, if you make them into little like chunks, put them in there with your paddle, go really slowly, it will start to break down. You just whip it for like so long, like, way longer than you need to. You just go, you go for like 10 minutes and that's why the stand mixer is really nice to have. Um, so you just keep going, you like scrape down the sides and you keep going and so a yellow butter will literally turn white. So you want to go until the color turns effectively white. My next tip is to sift your powdered sugar. Again, patience. People just want to like put the whole bag in there, but if you sift it so that there's no chunks in there and then you go a little by little, then it's a little easier. And then sometimes I like to change to the whisk attachment. Um, and that will incorporate air. So because a whisk has a funny little property that allows you to put air to get into it, which means that you'll have a fluffier um, frosting. And then you put a little bit of vanilla syrup and a little bit of salt. Um, salt seems interesting, but it can bring out the sweetness a little bit more instead of feeling overwhelming on your tongue. So that's your most basic one. My thanks again to Karthika Pia. Finally, we have a special holiday treat for you from the Kids Company's upcoming performance, Finding the Holiday Sparkle. As all of Sparkle Town gets excited for the holidays, Jane isn't quite there yet. Will her friends be able to help slay the blues in time to appreciate the winter wonder? Join the cast of Kids Co. as they help uncover the real reasons for the holiday season, from decorating and dancing to sharing new ways to celebrate. It takes everyone working together to make it sparkle. Here they are, the NWCT Kids Company. Feliz Navidad, Feliz Navidad, Feliz Navidad, Feliz Navidad, Feliz Navidad, Prospero Año y Felicidad. I wanna wish you Merry Christmas. I wanna wish you Merry Christmas. I wanna wish you Merry Christmas from the bottom of my heart. Joy in the world. Joy in the world.
Thank you so much to Kids Co. for that lovely performance. That is our show. I want to thank our guests, the Ogle family and Karthika Apia. If you want to follow her cake business, you can do so on Instagram at Karthakakes. This is the last show of the season, and uh, don't worry, we're going to be back real soon. We're just taking a little break. But, uh, yeah, it's been a lot of fun hosting this show. I'll be back next time. Perry, you'll be back. I just renewed my contract. Perry will be back, too, so we're both going to be back. And uh, I'm so glad I've had so much fun hosting this show, and I'm so glad that you've enjoyed watching it. So, yeah, you'll see us again soon. But until then, we're wishing you a happy and safe holiday season. Go do something. We'll see you next time.